Condoleezza Rice, another great person, Art Laffer, Steve Moore, Steve Forbes, Larry Lindsay, Catherine Reynolds, Scott Gottlieb, just spoke with Scott, Jim DeMint. President Trump said that he believes some states will be able to open their economies before the end of April. Actually, there are over 20 that are in extremely good shape. And we think we're going to be able to get them open fairly quickly, and then others will follow. The federal government will be watching them very closely and will be there to help. Dr. Scott Gottlieb has spoken to the president about reopening the country. He is, of course, the former commissioner of the FDA. He's also a CNBC contributor and serves on the boards of both Pfizer and Illumina. And Dr. Gottlieb, thank you for being here. It's good to see you again this morning. Thanks. I, I won't ask you to comment on what you said when you spoke to the president, but I, I would ask for your opinion on the idea that we could open some states before May. I mean, that, that actually came as a bit of a surprise to me. Maybe that's because I'm in New Jersey, which is in the middle of one of these hot zones. But does that sound right to you, that we could reopen maybe 20 states before even the end of May? Uh, end of April, I should say. Well, I think the vast... Right. So I think what we're going to see is a gradual reopening um, starting in May and into June. And I think it's going to be very gradual. Um, probably sometime in mid-May, we're going to start opening aspects of the economy, bringing back people to work very slowly in a very staggered fashion. And that's going to roll out over the course of a couple of months. Now, there are states that have been relatively um, un unhit by this virus, where you see very few cases or a small number of cases, rural states where people naturally social distance. And there's also states that have um, limited, for example, outdoor services. So if you look at a state like Michigan, um, lawn care services or building services that are done primarily outdoors by people working, you know, in groups where they're naturally distanced, those aren't being allowed right now, whereas in my state in Connecticut, lawn care services and some, um, some construction activities are still going on. And so you could see some of those kinds of outdoor activities brought back sooner in states that have been relatively unaffected. I think this is why you leave decisions to local officials, to governors, because there, there is a different experience with this virus all across the country. And different states have made different decisions about what they have restricted. And so they can make different uh, decisions about what they start bringing back slowly. So you could start to see activity come back in some states um, towards the end of this month into early May, the states that haven't been affected. But I think the vast majority of states is really going to be mid-May mid when you start seeing most of the activity slowly, gradually come back. I mean, it's been confusing enough to try and get the idea of social distancing, and that means you really can't hang out with friends or, you know, let your kids hang out with their friends or go, or go along with that. If we start to relax it, if the messaging from the top sounds like it's okay for many places to go back to work, do you worry that that dilutes the effectiveness in places where people really should still stay under lockdown? Yeah, that's the concern, um, that if we don't have a very broad, uniform message across the country, it could get confusing to individuals. But I think most people are taking their cues from the governors and from their states and what their states are asking them to do. And if you look at the states that haven't been as restrictive, you look at the data from the states where they haven't imposed the stay-at-home orders, for instance, the level of drop-off in activity um, is similar to the states that have imposed uh, more restrictive measures. So I think people are taking their cues from what they're seeing on the news, what they're hearing about the virus. And there are general concerns about the spread of this uh, virus. And so I think, by and large, you're getting more of a uniform response across the country, notwithstanding what individual states might be doing about certain activities. But, you know, there's been variability in what states have um, disallowed in, in this setting. Uh, the lawn care services is a classic example where there's variability across the state. So things like that, where it's primarily an outdoor activity as you head into the summer, you could see some of that start to come back a little bit sooner. That's lower risk. But I still think the vast majority of um, work-related activities are going to start coming back mid-April and roll out mid-May, excuse me, and roll out May through June. Mid May, yeah. I, I guess that would be my question. It, it, the, we've already read a lot of reports of, of places on Wall Street and other places where there's been pressure on employees to be coming into work, even with these lockdown agreements, or lockdowns that have been ordered. If you start to see that type of restriction, is there going to be more pressure on governors, on mayors, and on employees to actually come back in and get things going back to work? Yeah, well, look, that's the challenge right now. There's a lot of pressure from the business community that's not really apparent, um, not just on the administration, but on the governors as well, on the states, to bring back um, work-related activities. 
And there's also a public health cost what we're doing. We've talked about this. You're seeing a sharp decline in visits to hospitals for strokes and heart attacks. That's not because strokes and heart attacks aren't happening. It's because people aren't presenting. There's an 80% drop-off in prescriptions for vaccines, people skipping vaccinations, some of whom are not going to come back and get vaccinated after this is lifted. So, and that's, that's setting aside the, the dramatic economic impact and the social and, and uh, public health costs of that. So there are costs to what we're doing. Now, that, that said, when we start to bring back work-related activities in May, and I think we will, we're not going to be fully prepared. There is going to be risk. There's always going to be risk, but we're not going to have all the testing in place that we want. We're not going to have all the ability to track and trace people who are infected that we want. So there's going to be risk. Now, we are hoping, and we've said this before, that, that as we go into the summer, that could be one backstop. It's not going to be a backstop, but it could be a little backstop against continued spread as you get into the hot months. So we might catch a break in that regard. But there's no question that as we start bringing people back together, there's going to be risk that you have a resurgence in the infection. And that's, in fact, what we're seeing in Singapore and Hong Kong, where there's now a second wave and Singapore has now shut all its schools and put back in place a lot of its social restrictions. Look, a big question for the markets is how do, do people's behavior change after this? There was an upgrade today at, uh, at Piper for the stocks like uh, General Mills and Campbell's because they think people are going to be eating at home for a long time after this. I just wonder, what will you do with your family once they start releasing these restrictions? How much of normal life do you go back to? Would you go back to church or synagogue? Would you go back to eating out at restaurants? Would you let your kids have sleepovers with friends? How, how, how do you think your household's going to look, let's say, middle of May, beginning of June? Look, I, th I think activities permanently altered until we get to a vaccine. I think a lot of people are not going to have confidence to get into crowded spaces indoors. And, and I don't think we're going to have this, this sharp snapback after this is over, notwithstanding all the liquidity in the market. You know, that's why I've talked about an 80 percent economy heading into the fall. I think some marginal activity just doesn't come back. In terms of what I'm going to do, I'm going to be more cautious. I'm not going to travel uh, unnecessarily. If I go, go to places like restaurants, I'm going to go to places that I have confidence in, probably local restaurants that I know well, um, maybe where they're, they're testing their employees or advertising what they're doing to try to keep their employees and their environment safe. And I think you're going to see more of that also in the economy, where local businesses are going to band together, for example, maybe put a testing machine inside a local urgy center and say, well, we test our employees every Thursday night and you know, we put in place all these measures inside the restaurant fever checks, um, good hygiene among the workers at the tables, uh, paper menus, cleaning the tables more aggressively in between customers. You're going to see these kinds of things get layered into society to try to give consumers more confidence to come back. And I think a lot of consumers are going to opt to stay local as, as we restart the economy because they're going to trust their local establishments more. And so I think things are going to change in the economy, and I think certain things just don't bounce back the same way. Dr. Gottlieb, thank you. Always great to see you, and we'll talk to you again probably tomorrow. Thanks a lot. All right, coming up, uh, we're going to tell you.